Welcome to another Church History podcast organised by Westminster Presbyterian Theological Seminary. In this podcast we will reflect a little on what has come to be called Celtic Christianity. Most probably Christianity came to Britain with Roman soldiers and Roman merchants towards the end of the first and into the early years of the second century. The first recorded Christian martyr was Alban uh, during the reign of Diocletian towards the end of the third century. The development of Christianity in Britain uh, is somewhat uncertain. When the Roman legions effectively left Britain in 407 to help defend Rome, the Christian church in Britain was left to develop somewhat distinctively from the rest of the church in the Western world. And this is most uh, significantly and especially seen in the development of the gospel among the Celtic peoples. In the 6th and 7th centuries, uh, we read of Irish monks uh, travelling uh, to evangelise parts of modern-day Scotland. Perhaps the best known among them uh, is Columba, who settled in Iona. And there was also Aidan, who in 635 um, helped found the world-renowned today uh, monastery at Lindisfarne. And this founding of the monastery at Lindisfarne, geographically situated where it was, brought Celtic Christianity into closer contact with the Latin West. And this produced a series of um, controversies and disputes. Uh, chief among them, <laughs> remarkably, was the controversy, uh, deep and acrimonious at times, uh, over the dating of Easter. And this was settled in 662 at the Synod of Whitby uh, in favour of the position held by the Latin West and not by uh, the Celts. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of Celtic Christianity was its ecclesiastical organisation. Very strikingly, Celtic Christianity was not based on bishops. Now, bishops were present, bishops were there. But actually, Celtic Christianity was built around monasticism, and it was the abbot more than the bishop who had significant influence. And this monastic Christianity uh, give a very distinctive feel to Celtic Christianity. I should add, perhaps at this juncture, that many scholars today question whether there was such a thing as a distinctive Celtic Christianity, distinct from the Latin West as such. Certainly, wherever the gospel has come, there has been a measure of cultural adaptation. But many scholars today question whether Celtic Christianity was as distinctively different from the Christianity in the rest of the West. It's certainly true that even in its most Celtic uh, distinctiveness, Celtic Christianity owed absolute obedience and commitment to the primacy of Rome, never questioned it, and sought to take disputes directly to the Bishop of Rome. Another distinctive feature of Celtic Christianity was its penitential system. Up until this point, generally speaking, um, penitence, repentance, was a, a public act uh, men and women would be required to make public penitence uh, to express their contrition 
uh, for their sins. But in Celtic Christianity, penitence took on a more private identity. The individual would go to the priest and confess their sins privately and the priest would give them uh, various tasks to do to express their penitence and these also would be done privately. Um, people wouldn't know that you had sinned. Uh, the whole penitential system became uh, secretive and became increasingly focused, of course, then on priestly absolution. Significantly, it was this private penitential system that increasingly began to take root throughout Western Christianity and was adopted, generally speaking, by the Roman Catholic Church uh, and established at the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215. There were some significant achievements as a result of Celtic Christianity. There was strikingly an increase in literacy in those areas where Christianity had taken root uh, amongst the Celtic peoples. Irish monks uh, developed um, a written language for Old Irish. There was a, a network of monasteries established not only throughout Celtic areas but in Northumbria and Gaul and these monasteries became launching pads uh, for mission. The Irish, the Celtic church as a whole was noted for being uh, vibrantly evangelistic, taking the gospel to, for example, the Germanic tribes uh, in eastern parts of Western Europe. And as I mentioned before, um, it was through Celtic Christianity that a distinctive penitential system, a private penitential system, uh, came to embed itself in the life of the Western Church. It needs to be understood that Celtic Christianity belonged within the Roman Church. At the time of the Reformation, it, it suited men like Andrew Melville uh, to create perhaps something of a myth that Celtic Christianity held itself in, in conflict and in tension uh, with the Church in Rome. Now, it's true that Celtic Christianity developed a somewhat unique spirituality. Um, creation and nature uh, played a significant role in the spirituality of the Celts. But we need to understand that Celtic Christianity belonged body and soul to the oversight, to the pastoral care, um, to the spiritual nurture of the Roman Church. It recognised the primacy of the Roman See. There was no conflict in that regard. It saw itself as belonging to the Western Church, which by this period um, acknowledged the, the primacy, the supremacy of the Roman Pontiff. So Celtic Christianity, um, part of the wider Christian church in Britain, uh, a vibrant church, a church that took literacy seriously, a church that um, sought to go to the ends of the earth as much as it was able uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So... Celtic Christianity, real, vibrant and completely attached to the Roman Church.